Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming in on a cold and wet morning. Pleasure to have you inside here for in the next 45 minutes to an hour or so. Uh, this morning we've got the guys from Yamaha here to talk. We've got Dave Leckie, we've got Thank Mark you. Lapthorne over in the corner. He's going to come in in a little bit and have a chat to you. Um, we've got a fair few things to talk to you about this morning, but one of the sort of most unique things that Yamaha has decided to do this generation this year is to hold off releasing a whole range of new products like they have done the last few years in a row. To focus on it, you know, consolidate it, make it better, and so next year you'll come out with these big incremental updates. It's looking awesome for it. But for today, we want to talk about Music Cast and make sure everything, you're happy with it, how it all goes together. It's a product that I've got in my house. I've got several Music Cast components there. A lot of our staff have, a lot of the reps have. It's something that we're very comfortable with and we sell all day, every day. So. Uh, I'd like to hand you over to our experts, and uh, I'll leave you in Dave and Mark's ca capable hands. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Welcome, guys. Um, as Ben said, my name's David. I am your sales manager, so you, a lot of you probably know me and have seen me around, hopefully. Um, so let's get started. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is MusicCast 101. So I'm going to sort of take it right back to the start. So might be a little bit boring for some of you. Some of you who may have started in the last couple of years might not know this at all. Some of you may have forgotten some of it. So I think it's a good idea to take it right back and do a bit of a refresher. So what is MusicCast? So Yamaha MusicCast is a multi-room platform. Um, it's a audio system that allows you to link one device and share it up to 20 other devices in your home or business network. So you can have any number of these devices that you see across here um, spread throughout your home um, and then you can control them from a, a simple um, app on your phone or tablet, so Android or iOS. Uh, MusicCast devices also um, allow you to share inputs on, say, your receiver through HDMI. Um, your, we now have a turntable, so you can share your turntable, network turntable, and that can be shared out through a MusicCast speaker in your bedroom, say. So I'll run through some of the current MusicCast models. There's now 15 MusicCast current AV receivers. That includes the RXV range and the RXA range. There's five models of MusicCast soundbars. There's two models of MusicCast wireless speakers, one of them being the MusicCast 20. Two models of uh, MusicCast Micro Hi-Fi. Oh, sorry, three stereo amplifiers. And there's five preamp and amplifiers. So that is the WXA50. We've got the WXC50 and the new XDAQS series, which is the four zone rack mountable version that Mark's going to be talking about a little bit more uh, in depth later. And then the brand new uh, MusicCast turntable. So MusicCast devices can work fine on their own. So a customer can purchase a single product, set that up at home and use that as a standalone speaker very easily. So just say they could place that in the living room. However, once you add an additional speaker, you can then link them together and share, share the music from the living room to the bedroom. The more you add, the more than you can share. So you can also play those sounds independently from living room, study, bedroom, um, kitchen, you name it. So one of the key features of MusicCast is that any input on the MusicCast device can be linked to any other MusicCast device. 
This means that if you have Foxtel connected up to your soundbar or your AV receiver, so you just say you're playing Foxtel music or you're watching the cricket or the footy, you can then share that to a pair of outdoor speakers that are connected to a WXA50 or a pair of indoor speakers connected up to a WXA50 or going through to the little MusicCast 20 on your kitchen bench. So there's two key steps to using a MusicCast device. So the first is you add the device to your network and the second is you control it using the uh, MusicCast controller app. So who of you here have got MusicCast at home? A few of you? Good. So who of you here have got the MusicCast app on your phone and downloaded it? All right, good. So I've got a bit of a video here that Boyd, our product manager and trainer, put together, which runs through from basically downloading the app through to right through to setting up a MusicCast product. Um, so I'll play that for you now. Boyd couldn't be here today, unfortunately. He usually does all the training. So he'll be here in spirit in the training. In, the, in this next video. Let's have a bit of a look. Hi there, my name is Boyd. I'm the product and training manager for Yamaha Music Australia. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add MusicCast devices into the MusicCast controller app running on an Android device. First, if you've not already downloaded the MusicCast controller app, please download it from the Google Play Store. Simply search for MusicCast controller. All right, now open the app. If this is the first time adding the device to MusicCast, you'll see a black screen that you see here. Tap on the setup and then power on your device and hit next. Now, on your device, locate the connect button. Push and hold it down until the wireless indicator light starts to blink. Now, depending on your network conditions, or if hardwired or using Wi-Fi, you will either be asked if you want to add the device to your home network, select yes, and then if asked to enter in your network's Wi-Fi password, do so, and then you'll be taken to the name location screen. Alternatively, you may need to manually connect to the device, which I'm going to walk you through now. If this is the case, you'll see a message similar to this, asking you to go to your phone or tablet's Wi-Fi settings. So hit settings, and then you should be taken to the Wi-Fi selection screen for your tablet or phone. Wait for music card setup to appear, and then select it. If asked to enter a password, enter in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then select connect. Once you see the message connected to MusicCast setup, tap the back button on your phone or tablet to go back to the MusicCast controller app. The setup process will now continue automatically, and soon you'll be asked to enter in your Wi-Fi network's password. The connection will then finalise, and you'll arrive at the enter location name screen. Enter a location name, for example home, and then hit next. Now, enter in the room name, make up your own or select from the drop-down list, and then hit next.
any input on a MusicCast device can be linked to any other MusicCast device, excluding AirPlay. Now, if I tap the upward facing arrow down on the bottom of the screen, I can control the volume of each linked device individually. And if I go back to the room screen, you'll see that all linked rooms have merged into the AV receiver's tile, uh, and that has now become the master device. To unlink the room, either tap and hold on this tile and select unlink, or select the room tile, tap on the currently playing bar down the bottom where here it says AV2, and then once again select the link icon. Tap on each of the linked rooms to uncheck them, and then hit OK. Now if you head back to the room screen, you'll see that all four rooms have separated back out into four separate tiles. Finally, I just want to show you a neat trick that makes using MusicCast devices even more convenient. Tap and hold on the room tile and select room setting. Scroll down to edit sources and select it, and then tap on the input name that you'd like to change like so. I'm going to fast forward here as I rename a few. Now also for any inputs that you don't want to appear, just untick the box next to them. Now move back to the menu using the back arrow at the top of the screen, and there you have it, a neat, very simple input screen that anyone can use. And that's it. If you need any further assistance or have any questions about Yamaha's home audio products, you can contact our sales desk via the contact us section on our website. Simply visit au.yamaha.com. I do hope this video has helped you out, uh, and thanks for watching. See ya. All right. Thanks, Boyd. So, uh. I hope that made setting up Yamaha MusicCast a little bit uh, more straightforward for you. Um, if you hadn't done, if you hadn't done it before, so I'll, well, yeah, go for it. Um, if I set up a room or a house configuration, mm -hmm. so on that Wi-Fi network, yep, and then somebody else gets access to it also, so they can use MusicCast. Yeah, they see what I've already set up. Yes, so yep, exactly. Uh, the setup? Yeah, so they'll basically see exactly what you've set up. Um, the only thing they won't see is the custom pictures. If you put, they yeah, like that? yeah, okay. yeah. There's no way of sort of blocking that, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yep. well, it's not a feature yet. Um, so I run through a few new features. Um, that were added in on this current range. Um, so the current range now has Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And that spreads across the MusicCast 20, MusicCast 50, the new Sub 100, which is a MusicCast wireless sub. Uh, there's the MusicCast bar 40 and 400, and all of the current AV receivers. So that's the the current um, 85 series and the RXA 80 series. So that allows the current RXV and RXA to run wireless surrounds using either the MusicCast 20s or MusicCast 50s, or the um, the Soundbar 20, or sorry, Soundbar 40 or 400, to run wireless surrounds using the MusicCast 20 or MusicCast 50. So, the reason we can do that is that the they use a dedicated 5 gigahertz antenna to directly connect the products to product, to product uh, for fast, secure connection. Um, and the new wireless network subwoofer. So have anyone, have any of you guys used the wireless subwoofer yet? Or played around with it? So it works really well when connecting up a stereo pair so you can connect up a stereo pair with the MusicCast 20 um, and MusicCast 50. So a pair of those with the wireless sub makes a new sort of modern 
hi-fi setup, you can add in the, uh, the, the new MusicCast turntable, and that's a, that's a complete hi-fi setup just there using completely no wires. So the MusicCast Sub 100, um, eight inch driver, MusicCast multi-room, it's got an auto crossover and the twisted flare port. Uh, so new MusicCast features, up to 32 rooms per location now. So the MusicCast 20 wireless surround compatible. It's got dual passive radiators. Uh, MusicCast 50, wireless surround compatible as well. And it's got an optical input. So optical in input is great um, for use with a possibly a TV in the bedroom. So you could use this as your TV as your bedroom speaker and then connect it into the TV for a bit of TV sound. And something you may not know with the MusicCast 50 is it uses the same DAC as the RXA 880. So it's a great selling point. So MusicCast Bar 400, it's got DTS Virtual X, which gives you that really immersive surround sound just on its own. And then the option to run uh, wireless surround sound speakers off it. Then the MusicCast Vinyl 500, um, obviously multi-room turntable, it's belt, belt driven, it's got a, a rigid body. And here's a few little tips and tricks uh, for MusicCast. So, how many of you guys have got Spotify? Spotify Premium or Spotify Free? Premium. Premium? So, we now allow, on the current range, Spotify Free um, to be used uh, over Spotify Connect. So, previously, it was only Spotify Premium. That was across all brands, I'm pretty sure. Um, to use Spotify Premium for Spotify Connect. So now if you're a Spotify free user, you can still utilize Spotify Connect. So Spotify Connect is a really handy feature. It means that you're, you're using the Spotify app and then you can still control your MusicCast product from the Spotify app, basically. I'll give you a bit of a run through of how to use it. So when you're in the MusicCast app, just hit the Spotify button. It'll then jump you into the Spotify app, find the music that you want to play, then press the little Spotify connect button down the bottom left. And then you choose the product, MusicCast product from the list. It then connects and then you can jump back into the MusicCast app and then you can link to um, any of your other products on your network. Now to finish off, just a little bit of troubleshooting. So if you're in a situation where you're finding that the, the network's just a little unstable or you're having a, a few dropouts and you're just wondering why, you jump into your settings on the phone or your tablet onto a particular product, you can go down to the information screen. And if you go down to Wi-Fi strength, there's a, there will be a list of numbers. So you can see that 61 to 100 is a stable connection and 1 to 29 is very poor. Um, and then the second number is the Wi-Fi traffic. So if you're getting between 1 to 29 or 30 to 59 for your first number and uh, 0.500 or 0.300 for your second number, which is in the brackets, you, can, you, you should be able to tell that your, your Wi-Fi strength and the traffic in that area is a little bit too congested um, you might need to do something to boost that up or maybe hardwire the product, um, add an extra booster or 
move it closer to your router. And at this point, I will pass you over to Mark to run through some of the custom install solutions. Thank you. All right, good morning everyone. Thanks for coming down. Um, so as Dave mentioned, my name's Mark. I'm the commercial and integration specialist for Yamaha. So I'm available to answer all your questions uh, around um, install, custom install or commercial work that you might be doing. Um, but today we're gonna talk a bit about the um, relatively new XDA, QS and, and AMP products, which we've got in the rack over there. Um, so if you haven't seen these products before, um, now's a good uh, time to, to soak in some info about them. So as you can see here, we've got four music cast zones. So four fully featured um, uh, music cast uh, modules in, in each unit with um, very high quality DACs as we can see. So the ESS 9026 Pro, which is the same as used in our RXA 3080. Um, and then we use ice power um, digital uh, class D amplifiers for all the channels as well. So you've got eight channels um, rated at 50 watts a channel into eight ohm loads um, and they are four ohm capable as well. So you can run um, either you know, two pairs of eight ohm speakers or, um, or four ohm um, capable speakers as well. Um, unique f thing about these products um, from all other music cast products is there's no wireless comms on them at all. So no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. Um, they are designed to go in a comms room or a rack somewhere and, and be hardwired in um, with uh, all your other products in that type of environment. What it does do is it has two ports on the back though. So there is a built-in switch in the unit. So you don't need to soak up ports on a switch in your rack. If you're installing multiple units, you can actually just connect them one off each other. Um, so yeah, full, fully featured gigabit um, switch built into it, which internally all the MusicCast modules are connected to as well. Um, so that you get very good connection speeds across it. Um, so one rack space um, for your four zones, which is very compact as well. Um, it's all configured through a web interface. Um, so once you get it plugged into your network, um, you can discover the IP address. If you're using Windows, you can just go to your network section in your Windows um, computer and it will automatically discover um, the four zones for you. Um, double click on any one of those zones and it will launch the web um, uh, the web interface for you, then all you have to do is, is put in forward slash setup and that takes you to the, the actual setup functions of it. Um, it's very thorough in there what you can do with the, with the web setup. Basically every feature of the, the units available in that. Um, some unique features for um, custom work is it does have a cut-in input in it or a priority input. So if you put in, uh, for example, a paging uh, microphone um, or possibly an EVAC alert system, something like that, um, it will override the current playing input um, in whatever zones you choose to activate that in. Um, so I've used this in um, a school environment where the bell system um, goes into it and then it, it mutes the music that's playing in the, the common areas um, and the bell goes off at its scheduled times and then resumes playing the music. So that works really, really effectively as that type of system. Um, also a really good thing about the way they've designed this is um, the audio ground is completely isolated from the chassis ground. So in, um, in everyday terms, that means you won't get any ground loops or humming um, if you've got these set up in a rack, which is excellent because nobody likes chasing ground loops on an install. Um, so as you can see the front panel, it's quite simple. You've basically got a power and, um, and connect button for each zone as well as a USB input. Um, so the, the device itself is not really designed to be interacted with um, directly. It's really designed to be locked away in a comms room and you interact with it through the app. Um, so as I mentioned before, dual ethernet ports on the back that runs through the built-in switch. It does have IR control available as well. So it does have an IR in and out port. Um, so again, you can daisy chain multiple units off one another um, in doing that. So if you don't have, um, or you don't want to have <laughs> app control or app interaction, you can actually set up a, um, an IR control interface instead. Um, so you've got your cut-in input, which also has a parallel through output on it again. So if you're using multiple units together, um, and then you've got an auxiliary in, so you can add a, an external source, so be it a CD player or a radio tuner or something like that. So if you're wanting to run another source, um, and then you've got zone pre-outs for every zone as well. So the zone pre-outs are always available. Um, they can be used to route to other amplifiers. So we do have the matching XDA amp as well, so they can be used for that. Um, you've also got a chime um, contact on the back. So you've got four chime inputs. So that's one for each zone. 
Um, they can be used for doorbells, uh, entry alert systems, whatever, uh, whatever you can uh, find that closes a contact, it will trigger um, a built-in um, tone generator on the unit. So that will trigger a, a noise, again, in whatever zone you tell it to, um, to activate in. So some good uses for that could be maybe a small retail store that you've got a, um, an infrared beam on the door or possibly a, a motion sensor in the showroom. Um, you might be in the office, customer walks in, closes the contact, it sets off a chime in the office, um, but not in the showroom. So the showroom continues playing the music, you know someone's walked in because you, um, your chime's gone off in your office and you can walk out and greet your customer. Um, so examples like that which make it really flexible. Um, you've also got trigger outs on the back so you can synchronise power with um, other devices. So that can be um, switched either high or low depending on what you require of it, um, based on power um, to those main zones. And then all your speakers are wired via Euroblock connections, um, which if you've ever had to wire in multiple zones using binding posts, you'd be uh, very thankful for Euroblocks at the end of the day. So as I mentioned, the web setup, here's a bit of a screenshot from it. This is just one snippet of, um, of what it does. So it gives you actual control over the zone as well um, from the basic, uh, sorry, from the general tab, which we've got here. Um, so you've got volume, power, source selection. Um, you can also set up the EQ. Um, you've got a, a, some speaker processing available in there for um, you know, in-ceiling, in-wall, compact floor standing speakers. So you've got um, some options in terms of how you actually process your speakers. Um, there's things like um, uh, bass extension and compressed music enhancer, things like that, which you find on, um, on most of the MusicCast products as well, all in here, which you can activate. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the matching amplifier, so it's in the same format as the, the quad streamer or the QS unit. So this is basically a complementary um, additional eight channels of amplification. So using the same ice power modules, eight channels at 50 watts, um, eight ohms, um, also four ohm capable. So basically, um, this guy uses a, a bus patching system on the back, so every amplifier has an input and then also an output. So you can use it to, to patch um, through to one another. Um, and that comes with um, some patching leads and blocks in the, um, in the box with the unit as well. So, and again, you've got the Euroblock um, speaker terminals um, for all the amplifier outputs. So looking at the front and back panel again, these guys have just got powers um, switches on them. Um, generally, you're going to trigger them via a trigger input um, most of the time, so let it turn itself on. They do have audio sensing as well. Um, so if you want to have them come on when um, an input signal goes into it, if you don't have a trigger available or um, there's another use case for it, um, they can actually audio sense as well and, and come on with that. Um, they do have the IR in and out as well. So again, it can be hooked up to your um, infrared system if there's already one in the, in the installation. Um, triggers in and out as well. So it just lets you, again, the whole idea of being able to run multiple units in the one rack um, just expanded on there. Um, I haven't highlighted them, but you can see just in here, the small section, there's a few dip switches. That's where you have things like your auto, uh, audio sensing, and then it's got two standby modes, so either a low power or a high power mode. And what that does is if you um, run it in a, in a sort of a higher power standby mode, the, um, the speaker relays are already clicked in. Um, so whenever it senses an audio signal, the audio will pass basically within one second. Um, if it's in the low power standby mode, it takes about seven seconds for the unit to boot up and, and um, start going. So just depending on um, how high you prioritize that audio coming out, you can actually change your standby usage as well. So here's a couple of um, sample configurations that we've just pieced together. Um, again, the flexibility of this unit is its biggest selling point. You can, you can configure it in any way you want to. Um, so in this system, we've got four sources into six different areas. Um, so you've got um, the same source running out to um, four pairs of speakers in your living room, two pairs of speakers in the kitchen, um, and then the second source running into um, another pair of speakers on your patio. You're then utilizing a couple of the XDA amp units to power the rest of your speakers for your other two sources. XDA amp and runs four speakers out in the garden, um, bridged. I forgot to mention the bridging, but BTL mode, so you're getting double the power then. Um, so four speakers at, at 100 watts each instead of the 50. Um, and then the fourth source then goes to 
uh, four speakers in the passage and four speakers in the, in the entrance. So that's quite a large system that can be um, covered off with just three products in the rack. Um, they can also be equally used with AV receivers as the um, power amplifier for your additional zones. Um, so in this scenario, we've got a soundbar running off our HDMI zone two, um, and then our zone three pre-outs running into an XDA amp. And again, we're, we're feeding the garden with um, four speakers into the bridge mode. Um, and then you've got your main zone feeding your living room as normal and your um, powered zone of your 2080 feeding um, two speakers in your kitchen. Can also utilize some other music cast features that we've got here. So this um, scenario we're showing uh, wireless linking. Um, so we've got an um, a AV receiver with dual HDMI output. So something like a RXV 685 that we've got here. Um, which now has dual HDMI outs for your main zone. So whether you're running a projector and a TV um, in the main zone, uh, which might have a uh, drop-down screen for when you operate your projector, running your 5.1 surround sound, you've got a, a powered zone two off this guy, which runs um, internet radio in this example, and then you can wirelessly link that net radio to your MusicCast 20 and your Bar 400. Um, or on a slightly bigger um, unit like the RX-A1080, um, utilising your HDMI Zone 2 now, you've got a second TV running a separate um, source uh, with the rest of the configuration remaining the same. Or stepping up again to an RX-A2080, um, you've now got an additional zone there where you might have some uh, in-ceiling speakers playing your um, CD player. So just a brief recap on our um, install speaker offering. Um, so you've got the NSIC 400, four inch um, single uh, cone um, speakers. So then followed by your NSIC 600 and 800, so six inch and eight inch respectively, um, two ways with one inch tweeters. Uh, NSAW 194 and 294, so you've got a four inch and a six and a half inch offering um, in that particular design. And then you've got the NSAW uh, 392 and 592. Slightly different design. These are the triangle shape, which gives you a couple of different um, placement options. Um, so these are really good for sticking in um, corners um, of like alfresco areas or corners of, the, of a room. Um, they can even actually be um, mounted back to back on a roof so that you get a, a stereo spread from the middle of the room. So again, we've got a five and a quarter and a six and a half inch option in those guys. And that is the end of me. So thank you for coming down and paying attention and listening to David and myself. Um, do we have any questions about any of the products that we've got up here or any of the music cast stuff that we ran through? Yeah? Um, just a question about playing in multiple zones. Yep. Um, or playing through another. Um, <coughs> I understand that the, the source has to actually be playing through the primary box. Uh, if you're going, so in the example of an AV receiver, um, if that's, so you've got Foxtel running into a HDMI input to link that to other zones, yes, it would have to be playing in that, that zone. Um, so yeah, so with external um, inputs, the only other way you could do that. So if I've got a <coughs> turntable. Yep. <coughs> I play it into a zone on that receiver. Mm -hmm. If you've got that particular turntable, you don't because it's a music cast turntable. But if you've got any turntable, it would have to be active in the the, the zone you're linking from. Yeah. Um, can you play it through a zone that's just got three outs? Yeah, you can do that. So the the only the only um, thing with that is not all zones on all AV receivers can be link masters. So for example, if you've got a RXA 3080, zone two can be a link master, but zone three can't be. So just depending on the model of AV receiver. Uh, it's all, always mentioned in the, um, in the manual. Um, so off the top of my head, 685. 
can't remember if it can be a link master or not. Can you remember, Dave? It's called link master. So you look at the yeah. zone and see if the zone can be a link master and then the, the document. And it, even if you look in the app, if you go to zone two, if it doesn't have a link, um, you know, uh, indication there, you can't link that zone to another to another unit. Um, so that, that little chain link that was available. Um, Correct. Well, so with, yeah, with the AV receivers, the internal zones can't necessarily be a master. So they can always be linked to, but they can't necessarily feed out to other zones. Yeah. yeah. But if you were going to, um, like in that example, if you're going to use a turntable... They can't link from, so you can link it to it, so it can play it. Yep. Yeah, so, so if you had zone two, for example, on an AV receiver running net radio, um, you know, you can link that out to it, but if it was a zone three, um, that couldn't link, yeah, so that can't be a master, uh, master source. Thank you. That's all right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, are you going to start getting some more ceiling speakers in? Uh, that's definitely been talked about, yep. So, because um, that range has been out for a while now, so they're, um, they're due for refresh when that actually happens. Don't have an answer for that, unfortunately, but yeah, it's definitely um, been talked about. Yep. Thank you, guys. All good. No worries. Thanks for coming out.